you got a Trimble CB460 GPS control box with running uh, SCS900. Uh, I've got it opened up in manager's mode right now. I was going to go through some of the other options that are in there uh, that you would normally see just powering it on. The only thing, only differences will be the red dots next to these options. Um, it'll allow you to change some other stuff in there. Uh, top, we still got your design um, that you can select. The vertical offset there. Uh, if we select that, we can offset our distance off of grade. This would be grade here. Set it up or down, whatever we're working on. Be different. Um, go to our working surface. Um, and we can select our lift type. Um, we're putting in a vertical lift, which doesn't really make a difference on a flat level surface, but once you start getting into your slopes, a vertical lift on a slope is going to measure the distance up and down here like this or we can do a perpendicular lift, which measures our thickness uh, this way. What you would use this for is if, uh, for instance, like this liner, or landfill project I'm working on now, we gotta put a two foot clay liner throughout the whole thing. So we have to run in a perpendicular lift to get our two foot thickness on the slope. Uh, if we just did a vertical lift, this is uh, two feet thick. It's measured two feet vertically rather than perpendicular to the slope. Um, and if we select perpendicular lift, it also gives us a second option here. We can offset our working surface from zero. say um, I want to cut subgrade. My design is set to finish grade top of like a clay liner or something here and then I want to offset. I want to work off of subgrade instead of top of clay liner. I can come in here and offset my working surface down however far I need to be to subgrade and then I can use a vertical offset off of that rather than working from that line, I can move that line down here and then adjust in six inch lifts or whatever I need to off of my subgrade instead of finish grade. Um, go to horizontal offset. Um, I don't have the design for this project in the grader right now. I just got here this afternoon. So be a little hard to walk through this one, but basically I can select any line in my design works, um, select it, go back out, and then I can come in and set my horizontal offset to however far I want to be from that line. Um, again, it's kind of difficult to explain it when I don't have the line working there to show you, but and then you can also select this button here will change you from your offset being left or right of your alignment line that you selected. These are just increment switches or soft keys and you can bump it up five hundredths at a time rather than manually. Or you can go in here and do it that way. But GPS accuracy mode. Um, you got medium, uh, coarse, and fine. That uh, basically, I guess, the way it was explained to me by the dealer. If we have it in fine mode, if our vertical error is more than. 500 of a foot, it won't allow the automatics to kick in. Here, a 
more than 700 so a foot and it will not allow the automatics to work and end on. This machine, for some reason, they've got their course set to 7 tenths. They're usually 33 hundredths on all the other ones I've seen. Um, this is the only 460 we have. Everything else we have still has 430s in it. Have an option here in the manager's mode to edit our modes. So I could go in here, my course mode, I could change what my GPS error limit is in there. I could set it back to 33 if I wanted to. Um, having it at 7 tenths is just basically going to allow us to still have some kind of guidance um, with our GPS out of tolerance or out of accuracy um, it's still going to give us a cut and fill they cut and fill could be off up to seven tenths um, if we uh, would choose to run it that way um, I generally run it in medium that's tight enough for most of the rough finish work you're going to do with GPS and it'll still allow you to move or run because your tolerance is throughout the day you're going to average in that three four or five hertz uh, error. Here we got blade wear. Um, basically you're going to measure from the center of your cutting edge bolt to the end of your cutting edge. Um, as you run the machine, you're going to wear the cutting edge off this distance will get shorter. If you don't change it in here as you're wearing your cutting edge off, it'll still be cutting to what you've got put in here. So if a brand new edge on a grader is usually about 54 hundredths. So if we put a new set on and don't check them until we wear them all the way down, we're going to be cutting two to three tenths high above what actual grade is because the machine thinks that we're still five tenths below the mold board when actually we'd probably only be about three. Here we got a guidance method. Generally, most flat work uh, I run one point center. Um, we get into roading or something where we got shoulders. Uh, we can go in here and change our method. Again, in manager's mode, we've got a couple extra options. I'll go over those. But uh, if we go to one point focus. It sets our line we're reading off of or point we're reading off of in the mold board at 65 hundredths of a foot in from the end of the blade. Um, that's a standard measurement uh, we can do two points tips it'll take a reading off of each end of the blade so if we're in this mode and we got reading off of both tips and we try to run this green line on this slope and this green line up here it'll cut a straight line across there it won't leave that break in there so um, you mostly just want to use this on flat, uh, big flat planes and stuff where you're not having too many brake lines in it because if you cross over a brake line, it's going to cut different on that edge of the blade. Um, 3D one point custom. I use this one a lot when we're doing roading. Um, we've got shoulders and stuff to cut. I like to set this line in three feet from the end of the moldboard. That way if I've got a like a four foot shoulder or something I'm cutting, I can put this line on that shoulder and hang this end over that shoulder and this end over the, the driving lane on the road and it'll cut that cut that shoulder grade but feather all my extra material over the edges so uh, not trying to run right on the line with the end of my mold board and catch a windrow that's going to spill around and make a mess and more passes for you. Then we can do uh, two points custom. We can set our two points in the mold board wherever we want to. I've never had to use that. Um, I'm sure there are applications out there for it, but and I've, I've never used that one. Um, and then we can adjust to avoid overcut. Um, like here, for instance, if I am down here on this flat part and I have my overcut adjustment turned on if 
this end of my mold board comes across this line, it'll raise the, the blade up to whatever that grade is. It won't undercut it. Uh, if you turn it off, it'll allow you to undercut that toe. Uh, this comes into play if you're finishing slopes or something. Uh, you want to undercut the toe, so when you make your final pass on the slope, you've got a little slot to roll your windrow into and get rid of. Um, you'll want to change that to where it's no, it won't adjust for the overcut. Increment switch adjustment. Um, don't know if you can see it, but the increment switches are here. We can use these to bump our grade to offset up or down instead of doing it with the soft keys. In here, uh, usually we run our increment at five hundreds. Um, if you're doing rough work and you do a lot of offset, we can bump it to uh, uh, a tenth, two tenths, twenty-five hundreds, whatever we want to. I think the maximum we can go is forty-eight or forty-nine hundreds. Um, with GPS, that's about as fine as you're going to need it because GPS is that accurate. When we're using our ATS system, I set it at 100th to do fine adjustment for finish grading, light bar scales. We can adjust our tolerance on them, um, how, how much we're off of grade or off of alignment, and how many lights come on. display and light bar brightness. We can get in here and adjust the screen. If you're working at night, we can turn it down so it's not blinding you. You can't see out of the cab. Daytime, we turn it back up. Light bars, we can adjust our uh, brightness on those. Keypad, it will allow us to adjust our keypad lighting. Uh, main screen views. On our plan view, we can turn on and off our rotation. That I believe if it's on, it shows your machine or your screen constantly pointing north, and it'll show your machine going whichever direction you're headed on the screen. If you turn it off, it'll show your machine going forward, and the it doesn't rotate your screen behind you. Uh, auto pan that makes the design move with you. If you turn that off and you take off and you're zoomed in, your machine will go off the screen. You won't be able to see what you're doing. Turn that on. It'll follow you. Display recorded points. We can do points only, points of names, or none. Show points on this one. And then active views. We, have our, we can turn on and off our plan view, profile view, cross-section view, and our two tech screens. Um, then soft key options, mapping soft key. I would allow you to uh, record a point if you're wanting to start a plane or a slope. Uh, I'm sure I'll find that in there. We'll get to that later. Press and hold to record your point. Mapping and recording settings. Mapping for the main screen views, no, we can turn that on to yes. Uh, then we can do data recording for the office. And that will, you need to turn it on while you're mapping or all the time. That will basically create a file in the control box. The office can come out, or if you have Wi-Fi or the internet hooked up to it, they can just get on their computer and check it out, but they can see what you've done for the day, how many passes you're making, how much you're cutting the grade. Um, with the mapping on, you can, basically with the motor graders, you can do kind of like, a, you turn it on while you've got your switches on to finish grade, it'll basically do a topo of the work you're doing. Um, I don't know how accurate they are. We've messed with it a little bit. I'm not sure where the stuff is at in this control box, but in the other grader that I run with the 430 in it, um, 
we do cut and fill maps, rip, ripping maps, um, record mapping data, like basically do the topo with it. Blade tip mapping. basically record elevations and northings and eastings on your blade tips while you're moving or while you have your automatics on. Basically that's just recording. Basically turning your receivers into rovers while on each side of the machine to do a topo of the work you're doing while you're finishing it with the grader. Um, record a point. Same thing basically if you're got a ditch or cut or something for a brake line you can go along and record points and it'll it'll uh, save them in there for you. Valve speed. Uh, you can go in on this and adjust your basically you're adjusting your hydraulic or your uh, well, hydraulic electric valves for the GPS system how much oil or how fast they're responding to the signal you're getting. Um, generally, we run these motor graders at 65. If, and a lot of this depends on the materials you're in, but you can slow them down if you're getting a lot of blade movement or if your blade's not keeping up and you're getting some waves in your grade a little bit, you can turn it up faster and it'll eliminate a little bit of that. Um, this comes into play a lot more with dozers. If you're working in a real heavy wet clay that's wanting to constantly pull your blade in the ground and you'll want to turn your valve speed down a little bit, uh, that'll stop the blade from trying to react so fast and pull back up and leave bumps and dips. Um, again, the other direction, if you're working in sand or something that's real loose and you're traveling a little faster and your blades start, you know, you start getting a little bit of rolling in there, you can turn your blade or your valve speed up a little bit and it'll eliminate some of that rolling in your grade. Um, just bolt hole. This is basically grader specific. But if I want to pitch my blade forward so I can get a sharper edge and cut the harder materials, um, with it straight up and down, um, we're always running in four, which is the center one. There's seven holes, I think, on there. But if I want to pitch my blade forward to cut a harder material and get a better uh, finish grade, um, I can roll it forward and then I have to come in here and change this to whatever whatever hole I put it in. Um, one starts at the front and it goes all the way to seven at the back. You, four is about the highest to go on most graders because the bolt board won't stand up any higher than that. But if you don't change this, you roll your blade forward and forget to do this, your bolt board's gonna be cutting higher because you've shortened the distance from the bottom of the receiver to the, to the cutting edge on the bolt board. So you always wanna make sure you're cutting that if you're gonna adjust your mass to pitch your blade forward. Um, point zone. If you have an avoidance zone on your design, um, that's got to be put in there by your survey guy or your office people. Um, basically, that's an area on the job site that they want you to stay out of with the equipment. This gives you a warning distance. You can set that wherever you want to. Let's you know you're within 180 feet of it is what's set to here. Um, again, I've never had to deal with that. Text items. We can go in here on our plan view, cross-section view, profile view, text one and two screens, and put whatever the hell we want to on up to uh, five items. We got alignment, avoidance distance, blade roll, blade rotation, card time, controls limit, cross slope. Um, right now I'm on my plan views. So I've got cross slope on there, cut adjust, cut and fill center. I've got my cut and fill left and right turned on. Design elevation, design main fall, design name, design cross slope, easting, 
elevation, GPS accuracy mode, horizontal GPS error that tells you how much, how far off of the actual line you're going to be, or northing and easting you're going to be if horizontally. Uh, heading that will tell me if I'm going north, east, west, and south. Laser strike, mast offset, I believe is what that is. that one. Uh, main fault, it'll give me a percent slope or uh, I guess whatever unit or measurement I've got set to for my main fault, northing, offline. That comes into play with your horizontal offset. Um, if you select a line and put an offset into it, that will tell you how far away from your line you are. Uh, offline DL, offline DR, offline left, offline right, on ground, orientation, pass count. Um, you turn pass counter on, it'll let you know how many passes you're making to hit grade. Feed up. That's got to do with the GPS accuracy, position status. Uh, that'll give us fixed float, uh, what our GPS signal's giving us. You have to be in fixed most of the time to run. Sometimes, if you're in your course mode, you can run on autonomous. Reference surface, satellites, that'll give me how, the number of satellites I've got, and uh, sonic distance left, solid, sonic distance right, those are for a sonic tracer. Speed, I can put in there, it'll tell me how fast I'm moving. Um, station numbers, surface lift, GPS vertical error, vertical offset, and that's all of them. Here's my plan view, I've got those in there. Cross section, I've got cut and fill, cross slope, cut and fill, profile. I've got the same text one, I've got my satellites, the number of them, uh, my accuracy, horizontal, vertical errors, and my feed up. And then my text two, I've got northing, easting, elevation, design elevation, and position status. Uh, beeper, you can go in here and Turn off all the goddamn beepers in there. Uh, I won't mess with them in this one, but in Migrator, there's only like three of them on. Because it, if you have all of them on that are default, it'll just beat you, beep at you all day and drive you nuts. Um, I turn on the ones I need. Other than that, I shut them off because I can't stand to listen to them. Safe settings. Here, if you're going to, basically, if I go in here and change a bunch of stuff, I can go into save settings and save my display settings to what I put in there. That way, when I power it off and back on, everything will come back into it. Uh, the way I set it, we can go into machine settings. If we switch to a sonic tracer, laser, or UTS, we're going to have to build a basically build a file for the machine with that information on it. Um, it's going to have all the measurements and everything in it, do a valve calibration. Um, then we would go in there and save our machine settings. Um, I have to do that every day when I'm running ATS. I have to do a valve, valve cal, come in there and save it. That way I know my cross slope is uh, correct on my machine. Restore settings, get in there and fuck anything up. You can go to restore settings and should set everything back to default. Or, like say we get a, like we're on a GPS and then we flip over to Sonic and then we flip over to ATS. Um, if I come in here and select my machine settings, all of those files will be in here and I can, this is how I switch from GPS to ATS to Sonic to Laser back to GPS, it'll all be in there. Uh, display settings also, you can have different display settings set for different operators, different, uh, different things you're doing. Uh, GPS receiver configuration, I don't mess with anything in there. Select radio band. It's not going to show up because I'm not, I don't have anything hooked up for that. But we can go from our 900 megahertz radio to the, I believe it's 2400 megahertz. Um, the 900, you'll use.
use with GPS, the 2400, you use with laser, ATS, all that other fun stuff. Um, I'm not sure, but this grader might have the dual band radio on it. It's either this or that 850J we got has it, and then diagnostics. Um, it'll show me what I've got hooked into it. Uh, CB460, my two receivers, the 992s, BM420, that's the valve module, and the CR900, which is the radio. If I go in here to GPS, it gives me my left receiver, full art, TK, GNSS. Uh, I got more than 14 satellites, my PDOPS 1.4. Satellites track the signal, nine, um, all that information. My GPS error is vertically 200 of a foot, horizontally 200 of a foot. GPS mode is our TK fixed. Um, position status okay, search status okay. Here's my left receiver, all the same information. Data link, uh, my left and right data links, integrity. 100 seconds, 100%, 15 minutes, 89.8, 3 hours, 82.4%. That's because I turned this on about an hour ago, for a half hour ago, so it's going to show that there until we get it in 3 hours, and it should be 99 or 100% all the way across. Uh, latency, it's the delay in our signal. That one's right on. That one's 2 tenths of a second behind. GPS base station, I'm receiving information from both sides. If you ever don't get a signal, you go into diagnostics and it will say information not received in here if you're not getting a signal from your base. Down here on the bottom, we got sky plot. Um, this circle would represent the Earth. That's showing me where all of my satellites are in relationship to the Earth. Um, I believe we're probably at the center of that cross in relationship to the Earth there time, actual satellites, actual beat up, elevation mass, and GLONASS is on. I can edit stuff in there. Basically that just allows me to turn the GLONASS on and off. Um, GLONASS just going to give you more satellites that you're reading off of. Receiver tests, I can go in here, get the position, get details, restart a receiver, Hard reset and get identity. Um, here, in my diagnostics, I on the manager's mode, I've got my valve option. I can go in here and press these buttons, and it'll give me control over my hydraulic valves. With these soft keys, I can raise and lower my blade. basically valve test to see if you've got anything wrong with your valves. Uh, that's in the configuration 